Hello everyone and welcome to the Tuesday Checklist on a Wednesday, the show where we delve into our personal video game experiences and reveal what noobs we really are. Or at least it feels that way this week, as we're discussing difficulty spikes that we were nowhere near prepared for, the times we unceremoniously got our asses handed back to us when we least expected it. Humbling, if anything. Up first is the bean queen herself, Rosie. So, a difficulty spike I was not prepared for. In all honesty, I'm still never prepared for it, even though I I always... I know what's coming, but every time I try and attempt it, I'm still like, my god, this is ridiculous. And it is in Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, <laughs> which I played on the PS2 in the Sonic Mega Collection Plus. <laughs> so I've been playing this since I was a very young child. So I love Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. Uh, for those of you who don't know, it's a Puyo Puyo game. So, you know, it's the... Oh, a Puyo Puyo game. The... <laughs> I know <laughs> what you... a Puyo Puyo game is. Is that when you've What's got the... Puyo Puyo Puyo? Poo poo game. <laughs> what? It's, it's the game where you've got like, should I say you've got an orange blob and a, or a red blob and a blue blob, and then you want to get the same colours, four of the same, and oh, then beehive bedlam. Beehive bed. I was gonna say yeah. it's a beehive bedlam game. <laughs> yeah. um, what game? A beehive, 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 beehive bedlam. Beehive bedlam. What's beehive bedlam? It was on oh the Sky God. Interactive TV remote. <laughs> yeah, it was the best. It was the only reason to have oh Sky. Oh my God, yeah. I remember those. But yeah, so. When you're playing it, the first stage is a character called Arms, who's just this little red arms. robot. Oh, yeah, he's got very long arms. <laughs> and, um, th you know, if you keep your call cool on that fight in stage one, yes, he can he does put up a bit of a fight, but you can do him. It's doable if you just keep calm and just sort of play it and try and not get your rocks or your beans. They call Yeah, the beans, if you don't get them all the way to the top. So I've defeated Arms many, many times. Stage two, however, through the year, like over 10 years I've been playing this game, I have only defeated stage two, I think twice I can recall. And this is where they're a robot called Spark, I think they're called. And I'm not impressed by these sparks. names. There's a fun pun that's like, oh, I'm gonna spark up this match and he moves like this. That's that's why I just wow. did that, because he's really slick. That like... is a fun pun. <laughs> <laughs> got, Rosie, these names are not good. They're just arms. I didn't spark. name them. <laughs> No, it's the people who made Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. I, mean, I think of that as an like, Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine is a fantastic name. It's yeah. Dr. Robotnik who named them. Arm, Spark, come they on. They were really spent after that. Yeah. I think. They well, did the you should tell Sonic that. to tell Dr. Robotnik to change the name of his robots <laughs> because that's his fault there. <laughs> but either way, stage two, rather than when like the, the, the beans are falling down, they kind of go down in like a little rhythm so you yeah. have time to plan time to flip anything around and plan your chains the second robot literally bean comes and goes bong bong like straight down he just shoots these beans down repeatedly and i'm doing this because it's literally in this rhythm that's how quick he does it so that you're there like you know still trying to plan oh god where am i going to put the beans i've got to try and get some chains because if you get a chain then more rocks that go Yo. they come down and they ruin the like your opponent's game quicker this is just stage two and this guy is already just like you know not giving you time to think slamming them down and even if you think that you're getting there and you see the the robot in the middle kind of panicking they go <laughs> as you as they get closer up you see sweat coming off their robotic heads <laughs> he will find a way when i even captured for this tuesday checklist i was fighting him for five minutes and i had like three occasions where i thought i was gonna get him i thought oh my god is this gonna be like the third time i've defeated him am i going <laughs> to have it on capture no he just somehow after i did like th chains of three i tried all this stuff i tried just getting rid of the rocks he came back just slamming them down without even thinking and then he just was able to defeat me i mean it's stage two it's not <laughs> even as if this is like later on you just do the first stage you think yeah i did the first stage this is great stage two boom complete slap in the face from the difficulties literally there's some good he just chucks them down all the time i've got a lot of drama of being a child trying to defeat stage two it was like a big thing in in my own life <laughs> of trying to defeat this robot but um it's the only sort of like thing i can think of that's like you know a difficulty spike as early on as stage two in something i'm not like you know great at puyo puyo but still I i'd like to think i could beat stage two <laughs> but apparently not in dr robotnik's mean bean machine you might say it's, uh, Bedlam. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> you got a match. <laughs> there she goes, yeah, that's my girl. Yeah, that's cool, me. The girl. <laughs> Okay, Rosie, I see stage two and I raise you stage one. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. Fair I'm going play. big. Um, 
it's you know it's a bit it's a it, it's a bit cliche what I'm going to say, but it does fit the bill really because I think that the rest of the game is not this hard. It is of course the tutorial from Driver. Uh, yes, oh, yes. Fair, fair One play, of the most notorious, most notorious I have difficulty heard. spikes in in gaming history, I would say. It I've is. Heard tell. It's famed. It's famed. Um, and we put this to the test a few years ago um, when we played it at, on stage at EGX. And it's just it's just silly. It's just silly. It's a, a game where you play as like a getaway driver. Um, it's basically just an excuse to drive cars around a city quite fast and, you know, badly. And it's really, really good fun. But in order to get there, there is an unskippable tutorial that you have to complete. It just, there is, you can do nothing else. There is no way around this. You have to do the tutorial, which is uh, like a checklist of things you have to do in a, an underground, you know, uh, multi-story car park thing. And it's just ridiculously hard. It's on, it's timed. So you have like, I, I can't remember, is it 90 like seconds? Minute, isn't it? Maybe a minute to do like eight things. I don't think, it doesn't really tell you how to do the things. In fact, it, it, am I right? It doesn't tell you how to do them. No, right. it just, you it's have to just like, guess. it's just like slalom, please. Yeah, it's like do a slalom. <laughs> 180. Do yeah, 180. do a 180. Uh, like, I don't, uh, how? I don't know how. I'm, what? No, you can watch. I think, can't you watch some like? A oh yeah, there's a video you can something. watch. You can watch a video. I think. And of, then that shows you the buttons on what to press. Yeah, it's like, and it, but it's so impossibly perfect. Like the video version is just mm. like you think. Oh yeah, okay, I can easily do this. Um, but you know, being a kind of uh, a PS1 game from back in the day, a driving game, it makes use of the D-pad. D-pads are not great for driving games. It's not easy, it's quite clunky, and it's quite spongy, and it's not very accurate, and it's just incredibly hard. And it it's just so much harder than the rest of the game. I don't think you need to, to be able to drive. It's like a driving test. It's like you don't need to be able to do these things in the real world, in the in the world of the game. Um, and yeah, if you, if you can't get past it, you can't play the game. And I, you know, I've heard tales of people who couldn't get past the tutorial, and that was just that was their experience of driver. Was it's, that you? No, it wasn't me. I I I definitely got past it. We definitely. did it on stage. We we we've done our our valiant efforts to beat the tutorial. <laughs> we've That's done true. our time. But we didn't. I, I, well, it was a race to see who could do it first, and it was Nath who did it, annoyingly. Um, but was it? I think so. What, well, like Nave did, Nave did the. I think we we figured out the moves and how to do them, and then Nave just came in and did them in time. So it was like a group effort. Oh, that's right. Yeah, there was definitely some group learning going on. It was on. group learning. I do remember. Yeah. I got some applause. That's what <laughs> I remember. You always get applause. Doesn't matter what you do. I also remember I was very close to doing it before Nave just won. I think I just did it out of time, and then Nave just came in and just did it. I wasn't Apparently. there. Apparently, you weren't there. I wasn't there. Just before Ash was born. I'm Nath now, so I'll take his mantle. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, driver, it fits the bill. It's definitely a difficulty spike because it's just, it's just, uh, but it's right at the start of the game. It's so weird. I suppose you know, if you can, if you can do that tutorial, you can do anything else in the game. So it's, it's, um, it's more like an exam to see if you're fit to play the game or not. But yeah, just unusually hard. Why? Why driver? Why? Okay, so a difficulty spike that I always remember keenly is in Final Fantasy VII when the whole game up until that point has been very easy, especially when you play it like I do, which is <laughs> you straight away grind and grind and grind and grind and over-level yourself until the point where everything's just really easy. Like, I'll learn all of the materia that I have and I'll make sure I've got, you know, way better limit breaks than I should have by that stage of the game. So I was just having a great time, beating all the bosses, thinking I was really great at the game, uh, until you get to the Temple of the Ancients. Oh, I hate the Temple of the Ancients. You know the Temple of the Ancients, don't you, Dave? Don't you, Ash? Temple of the Ancients. Oh, Final yeah. Awesome. So it was really I, hard I, know, that I remember oh, being difficult. stuck on this as well, I think. So, God. I mean, the whole thing, to be honest, the whole Temple of the Ancients is a pain because it introduces a bunch of, like, nitty gritty puzzly bits there's like a bit where you have to run across a screen whilst a boulder is rolling down and there's like a gap in the boulder and you have to time your run to perfectly fit in the gap in the boulder or you get smooshed and squashed and thrown back but that's not the bit the bit is there's a boss fight right at the very very end of temple of the ancients called demon's gate 
And I hate Demon's Gate because the other thing as well is you're forced to have Aeris in your party at this point. When I first played Final Fantasy VII, I didn't have Aeris in my party, so I hadn't leveled her up at all. So she wasn't overleveled. She was like a weak link in my party, just getting killed all the flipping time. And there's like a there's a horrible one-two double boss right at the very end. Um, of the Temple of the Ancients. So you've, you've done all of the annoying puzzle bits. You're like, oh, thank God, I'm nearly out of here. I can get back onto the world map and level up and hopefully get Aeris out of my party. But you do all the puzzles, you fight a dragon, which is, which is what you think is like the end of dungeon boss. And it's, you know, a fairly straightforward boss fight. Beat the dragon, it drops a piece of materia, the Bahamut summon materia. You have a tiny window of opportunity to pick it up and equip it because if you don't do that straight away you're instantly thrown into another boss fight against the demon's gate and it's really really hard and it has incredibly high defense the only thing that can get through its defense is Bahamut so if you didn't know it was coming and you just pick up the piece of materia and like yeah I'll, I'll equip that later once I get onto the world map then then you're in trouble because it's just you know you've just you've just done a one boss fight and you're immediately into another boss fight and it's really hard and he kicks your ass and you die and that's the difficulty <laughs> spike i hated it i hated it so much um and every time i play final fantasy 7 now i get the you know just get a little bit antsy when i know the temple of the ancients is coming it's like oh god i've got to fight that flipping demon's gate now does the move where he like drops a big rock on you from the I'm trying to remember to visualize. I remember being stuck, but I'm trying to visualize the boss. All I remember is just a big wall with a face oh, that comes out. Oh, the big wall! It's a big oh my wall. yes! A face comes out the wall. It's just a big snarly face. I with remember two now. One hundred percent. He does a move called Cave In, mm. where he just slams a bunch of stuff down on you. Right? You know, if you've not got barrier magic equipped and cast, you're in trouble. The difficulty spike that most affected me recently was a self-made one. And yes, we're talking about Elden Ring again, because I can't stop playing Elden Ring. My first kind of experience of Elden Ring proper was playing co-op with Rob and Rosie. And we all went in together and I made a wretch class, which is like the worst yes. class in Elden Ring. You're in your pants, you've got a big club, and you've just got to go out into the world and kind of figure it out for yourself. And I was really excited to play as the wretch because I did Waste of Skin in Bloodborne. <laughs> and I wanted to be able to build up my... Horrible little Waste character. Of skin. And going in in three-player co-op with Rosie, who's like the skill, and Ro <laughs> and Rob, who's also there. Um, <laughs> and Rob, who's also there. Uh. No, you're incredibly good at viscerals and kind of getting all of the the backstab and sneaky kills in. Rosie's there. She's just talented at Souls games. <laughs> like having having these two, Mama and Papa Souls, in there was absolutely fabulous for me because I was just going around running in, doing my usual, where I just go and wail on something, then going ah. It's too tough, come and rescue me, please. <laughs> and then running away. And I thought, God, I can't wait to play this when I get home. I just cannot wait. Oh, I'm ready for some wretched fun. So I booted it up and I got ready. My wretch is there. And like we're, the quest that we did um, for the stream was just trying to find some clothes for my naked wretch. We'd stopped right in front of a castle. Castle Morn is where it is. And bear in mind at this point, we collected all these runes, but I hadn't spent them. They were just in my pocket. Oh, no. uh, because we'd been streaming, you can't level up when you're playing co-op. So I'm still like a level one. So I go in, instantly die, obviously, because no. I just ran in. I did my usual when I ran in. All of the birdmen are there with their little, like, hook feet going, Wah! and the dog's coming around going, rrr, rrr. so it was... They <laughs> came <laughs> bounding over. <laughs> okay, bound. Oh, well done, Ring. <laughs> <laughs> Dead. So and I was like, well, that was a bad idea. I'm gonna have to think a bit more tactically now because I still have Bloodborne brain when it comes to Elden Ring. I'm very much like, if I go in and smack something up, I can take the damage because I'll get it back when I attack again. Like the, the health will come back. That doesn't happen in Elden Ring. So I went back, got my runes, came back, leveled myself up to a level four. I was like, oh, beautiful, wonderful, level four. I went back in and slowly just tried to sneak my way around each thing. And in this area, I can tell you exactly what's in this area because I did it so many times. Right, there's two dogs in a little hidden alcove to the side. So I'd go up and sneak up and I can take the dog because I take three beatings with the club. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. I love this. It's uh, like the best bit of Souls games, isn't it? When you learn an area so well because yeah. you've died in it so many times. So I went up there and there's one dog and he's chowing down on a corpse and you see him first. So I was like, right, I'm going to triple club this dog and then that's that. 
triple club, dead. <laughs> See his friend, triple club, dead. And down the side, there's three more dogs and one patrolling. So I go down there, triple club on the one dog, dead. And then the other three come over and I managed to take them because I had like a moment, I had some vials with me, but rolled too far to the bird men. They saw me, came down with all their claws, dead. <laughs> so go back in. Two dogs, triple club, triple club. Third dog, triple club. Other dogs, triple club, triple club, triple club. And then the bird men are left. Sneak around. Pumpkin head sat there. And I'm like, I don't have to fight him. I could sneak past, but I was high. I was high on the, the joys of killing all the dogs. And I was like, I can put pumpkin head. I can take him. He does not take a triple club. He takes many clubs. And there's another hidden burn band around the corner, which is what I found out when I tried using him. Basically, what we could have done very easily became very, very, very difficult and took a lot of time. And I didn't even do it. I gave up in the end because it was too hard and thought, oh, you know what? I'll go back to the starting area. And even that was super hard. I've been like running around Limgrave trying to take on soldiers, trying to sneak and back club people. And it was just, it was it was much harder than I, than I thought it would be, basically. I was unprepared for it. I had to rage quit I had to I had to turn it off in the end you know like I, I say I'm gonna say you know you guys know I know you all know the moment where you're like actually I'm turning that off now like and you say out loud you're like I'm going to turn you off now and like <laughs> <laughs> and you can't stop it <laughs> yeah, it's like when you hold the PlayStation button down it's like you're suffocating it you're like off oh. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, then I had to come back to it and it's still incredibly hard, but I've had to like eat my humble pie and go grinding. And I'm really, really enjoying it and I like the difficulty, but just the, the my beginning opening, haha, I'm having fun as a wretch with you guys to my, oh my God, I'm a, why did I pick a wretch? This is awful. I have to do everything myself, naked. It's just, oh, well, not naked. That was a choice, but uh, yeah, it was just, it's just tough. It's just tough. Puzzle. It's, it's got the puzzle as well with all the, the steps, isn't it? When they're all upside the steps, down. steps, there's the weird maze. I can, mm. I can hear the music. <laughs> oh, it's just ingrained in my brain. Hate it. Oh, it makes me furious. Does anything not make you furious, Rob? Ooh, don't get angry at that one. What difficulty spikes were you not ready for? Let us know in the comments below. This has been PlayStation Access. Don't forget to subscribe for more PlayStation goodness, and we'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching. PlayStation.